So my mission here today is to express my deepest gratitude and witness to what the Blessed Mother has done for me in my life. She has led me to the Lord in a way that no one and nothing else could, led me to the Eucharist, led me to understand the scripture, and changed my life. I don't even want to think about what my life would be without the Blessed Mother and the Rosary. So my hope today is to convince you of the incredible value of the Rosary. Now, I have some gifts for you at the door. Unfortunately, I only have two left. I had three, but <laughs> the other mass has wiped out the free miraculous medal. So what I, <laughs> what I have left for you at your two exits is um, a little blue leaflet which has the 15 promises of Mary to Christians who pray the Rosary and uh, my little handout uh, that uh, talks about the Miraculous Medal and the Rosary. And at the bottom, it tells you uh, where you can, if you're interested in getting my books, a lot of times people see me quoting from my book here, The Rosary is the Answer, and uh, they want to get the book. So the phone number of the publisher and the uh, website address is there. Also, I have uh, two YouTube channels. And uh, one of them is uh, basically my talks on the faith over the years. And it has a slideshow of my church, which of course I'm biased, so I think it's one of the most beautiful churches in the world. You can judge for yourself. Um, so uh, if you go to the website, it's just called Father Space and then Burke. And um, so I have several uh, uh, YouTubes where I talk about all aspects of the faith. And I have another one called Man Cave on God's Mountain. And that's sort of at the moment my cooking channel, although I have some other things. now. My number one video has 5,500 views on the Father Burke channel, and that's on the Assumption of Mary. But for some reason, my other channel, I have a little video on how to eat an avocado, even if you don't like the taste, has 16,500 views. So, I don't know how I wound up being a better salesman for avocados than for God, but I'm, I'm working on bridging that gap, okay? So, um... One of the things I want to talk about, which I think may and hopefully will change your life, is what I call the four words of eternal life. Pray the rosary every day. Now, those words are important, important enough for God to send his mother to planet Earth, not once, but several times, holding the rosary in her hand and saying those words to pray the rosary every day and working a miracle. So we have... Um, our Lady of Lourdes on the church calendar, Saint Bernadette was who she appeared, official. So approval of the church in the sense that you have a saint there. The feast of Our Lady of Lourdes is on the church's liturgical calendar and now Our Lady of Fatima is there as well. And so Mary came there and I'm gonna to read to you a little bit of that. Um, so, so, you know, the, the idea that God would send his mother to planet earth holding a rosary with that message and bringing a miracle, I'd say pretty important. Now, there is nothing in life more important than our salvation. 100 years from now, everyone here is going to be either be in heaven forever or in the other place. And whatever's bothering you now will be nothing 100 years from now if you're in heaven. But it doesn't matter how much of the world you have, how much money you have, how famous you are, if you wind up in the other place, your life is a failure. It's the only mistake that cannot be undone is winding up missing your chance for heaven. So I think we all should consider how significant that is. We have a lot of things in our lives that are vying for importance in our hearts. And so um, I think we need to concentrate on getting to heaven. Now, everyone here, I'm gonna talk about what I call the three great uh, um, decisions in life. The first thing, something you probably maybe haven't thought about in a while, but the reality is everybody knows we are not in paradise. Pretty obvious. The whole world can agree on that. The whole world can agree everybody would like to be in paradise. So then step three is where the world splits in half. How do we get back into paradise? Well, the gospel of Jesus Christ is, I believe, the only true way to get there. So when you look in the Gospel of Luke, what does Jesus say to the good thief? Today you will be with me in paradise. Now there's suffering on the cross when he says that. 
because this world is a place of suffering. It's a place of self-denial. It's a place that we, we are tested by God. It's a place that we labor in the vineyard, so we work for God. And, uh, and so this is where we, in a sense, begin our purgatory, because this is where we seek to purge ourselves from the love of sin and change our hearts into a place that is filled with the love of God. So I believe that there's a spot in the center of our hearts reserved for God alone. Psalm 62 says, in God alone is my soul at rest. St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in you. Jesus says, seek for yourselves treasure in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where thieves break in and steal and rust consumes. But seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things you need will be given you besides. So, so the problem is a lot of people don't get with that program. A lot of people are trying to find heaven on earth, their paradise in the imperfect temporary pleasures of this world that cannot and never will be able to satisfy the deepest longing in our heart for perfect happiness forever. And that's the first thing that's wrong with the things of the world. They come to an end. Second thing is, no matter how much you get, it's not enough. I'll give you an example. Think of anything you want that gives you pleasure and happiness to a certain degree in this world. And I have a friend who likes roller coasters. So I talked to him about it one time. So if we put you on this roller coaster, you'd be happy, right? Oh yeah, happy. I love roller coaster. We'll let you ride it for an hour without having to get back in line. Oh, I'd love that. Be so happy. Okay. Let's leave him on there for 12 hours and come back. You want to keep going? No, I can't take all this happiness. Get me off the roller coaster, right? So the world cannot satisfy us, no matter how much we get. And you've got people that follow the false gospel of the world. You've got movie stars and, and uh, all kinds of people with lots of money and fame and fortune and friends. And what do you hear? <clears throat> oh, they committed suicide. Oh, they're in rehab. They overdosed on drugs. They're, they're, they're a drunk. They can't handle so why are they going for drugs and alcohol if they've got everything the world says is happening? Why are they committing suicide? Because they found out that the false gospel of the world is false, but they didn't go to the next step. Well, if this is the false gospel, where's the true one? The true one is in God. And so they recognized that they made a wrong turn, but they weren't willing to back up and turn to the Lord. So... For me, I will give you a couple of motivations why the, the rosary and the Hail Mary in particular is so wonderful. So in the Hail Mary prayer, sometimes it gets criticized, well, you know, you Catholics, you worship Mary. You tell them, no, we worship God alone. Always did, always will, never worship Mary. Mary is our spiritual mother. We honor her and ask her to pray to God for us and with us. Well, why do you say you pray to Mary? It's another type of meaning than the restricted use of prayer that you use for worship of God alone. When we say we pray to Mary, we mean we ask her to pray is, is to request, or we ask her to pray for us and with us and worship God when we honor her. Now, what did the gospel say today? One of the titles of Jesus in our gospel. Now, we heard Jesus called Son of David many times. Well, today's gospel calls him Son of Mary. All of us here should be sons and daughters of Mary. When Jesus dwells within us, we have God as our Father, our Father who art in heaven, and we have Mary as our spiritual mother. And so what did Jesus do as he was dying on the cross? He, as his last will and testament, his last gift to us, he gave us his mother. He said to John, the beloved disciple who represented all of us, behold your mother, and to Mary, woman, behold your son. And so that special relationship that we now have. And so in the book Revelation, chapter 12, also written by John, um, you notice um, uh, it says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman crowned with 12 stars. What kind of woman wears a crown? A queen. She's the queen of heaven and earth. And what does she do? She, she gives birth to a child who will rule the nation with an iron rod. And that's Jesus. Then the dragon comes after the child, the child escapes, and then the dragon comes after the woman. She escapes, it says. And then what does it say after it says the woman escaped? Verse 17, very significant. 
because this woman is Mary. She just gave birth to Jesus. And the dragon's after her. Verse 17, look it up, chapter 12, Revelation. Then the devil went off to make war against the rest of her children. She has other children? Who's that? Those who keep the commandments of God and give witness to Jesus. That's us, the church. We are sons and daughters of Mary. She is our mother and we are called to honor her. The commandment, honor your father and mother. Jesus kept it perfectly. The original hero means to bestow glory upon. So Mary honors his mother. His first miracle was worked, chapter two of John, at the wedding feast of Cana at her request. So Mary has been given a significant role. Uh, in, uh, we call this thing typology. It's a Catholic way of studying scripture, which is used by the New Testament. Jesus uses it, and, he, uh, and also St. Paul calls Christ the new Adam. Well, the church fathers call Mary the new Eve, death by Eve, life through Mary. So a person, place, thing, or event in the Old Testament that prefigures a person, place, thing, or event in the New, that's typology. And so there's many connections that the scripture makes. And so we see Mary as the new Eve also, who was the son of David that foreshadowed Christ? King Solomon. Who was King Solomon's queen? It wasn't his wife, it was his mother. And we see in scripture that she comes in to speak to him and he has a special seat brought at his right and she has a request and he says, ask whatever you wish of me, mother, I will never refuse you. Aha, so powerful. So we want Mary on our side. We want Mary to be our spiritual mother to help us on the path to heaven. And so when we say the Hail Mary prayer, what do we say? Hail Mary, those are words of honor given by God the Father commanding the Archangel Gabriel, you go down and visit the Blessed Mother and you say these words. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. So God commands the Archangel Gabriel to honor Mary. And when we pray the Hail Mary prayer, we repeat those words, the word of God honoring her. And what else do we say? So the first line mentions the Lord. So the fundamentalists attack the Hail Mary prayer. They say, well, that's all about Mary. Really? Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with you. Number one, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Jesus, number two. In fact, Jesus is the center of the Hail Mary prayer. Blessed is Jesus. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. The Holy Spirit inspires Elizabeth to say those words, also the word of God. Then the church, inspired by the Holy Spirit, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and she prays for us now, at that moment, and at the hour of our death. We get a two-for-one deal, and that's the eternal fire insurance. That's why it's so important for us, because when, every time we pray the Hail Mary prayer, the more we pray that prayer throughout our life, the more powerful will the prayers of the Blessed Mother be when we need them the most, at the hour of our death, now and at the hour of our death. We don't know when it's going to be, but at the hour of our death, don't we want to die in a state of grace so we go to heaven? Or even if we go to purgatory, we're still going to heaven. So the Blessed Mother will pray that if we're not in a state of grace, we'll be able to do uh, sufficient contrition to get there, maybe have a priest give us the sacraments. And if we are in a state of grace, to stay there. So there's an old Irish saying, may you be in heaven a half hour before the devil knows you're dead. So. Um, that's what I, I call that part the eternal fire and trust. The other thing is, I have 15 promises of Mary to Christians who pray the rosary given to St. Dominic and Blessed Alan in a revel, private revelation. The first promise is, I promise my special protection to all those who uh, pray the rosary. So let me give you some examples of the power of that line. And I can tell you myself, because you know I learned how to drive in Jersey, and. I used to drive a little faster, I've slowed down, but I've had a few close calls, and I would say the Blessed Mother protected me. Now, this is kind of a scary story, but it brings home the point. There was a young girl whose mother made her promise to pray the rosary every day at college. She didn't really want to do it, but she loved her mother, and her mother was paying her tuition, so she was at the University of Florida. And then one night, the monster came, a real monster. And you can look him up if you hadn't heard of him before. Ted Bundy, serial rapist and murderer. So he went to get her, and he describes later on after he was captured, he was executed eventually. He talks about how he, there was like an invisible wall blocking him. He couldn't, he couldn't get to her. And he had a sense of fear that he never felt before. And so that girl woke up peacefully. 
She didn't wake up with Bundy's hands on her throat because the Blessed Mother protected her because she prayed the rosary. Unfortunately, a couple of the other girls in the dorm apparently weren't praying the rosary or whatever, but they wound up being victims. So that's one powerful example of Mary's special protection. Another one is um, the story of what happened to the three priests who were devoted to the rosary at Hiroshima. We all know the atomic bomb blew up in Hiroshima. At the bottom of the blast was the Church of Our Lady of Assumption with three priests who were devoted to the rosary. The windows were blown out. They received some minor injuries and cuts from glass. They went out the door and saw the town was gone. They never suffered any radiation damage at all. So powerful, the protection of Mary, even protecting them from the atomic bomb. Father Patrick Payton, one of my heroes, he's up for sainthood. He's called the Rosary Priest. He had a motto, the family that prays together stays together. He went all around the world preaching on the rosary. Why did he do that? Well, when he was getting to the end of the seminary, he had a horrible cancer in his lungs that was about to kill him. And he would have never made it to the priesthood. He was gonna die just before he got to the end. And an older priest went to see him and said, you're devoted to Mary. Why don't you ask the Blessed Mother to heal you and promise her if you're healed, you will spend your life promoting the rosary. Well, he did it. He was healed, got ordained, and he lived to be around 90 years old. And he spent his time, and you can look, you can even go on YouTube, Family Rosary Crusade, Family Theory, you can see Father Patrick Payton. So I want to tell, in conclusion, getting to the end, in case you're worried, is he ever going to stop? <laughs> Maybe. When I was a young man back in 1977, um, I had heard about atheism. I was about 13 years old, and it's kind of the beginning of my journey. And I was thinking, why would people choose not to believe in God? And I thought, well, maybe they just don't want to keep the commandments. Maybe they don't want to engage in sacrifice for the love of God and neighbor. And I thought, well, is there any logic to this? And I kept thinking, is it logical to believe there's no God or more logical to believe there is a God? And I think if you look at the arguments, more logic is on the side of believing there's a God than not. I mean, really, all this just happened by accident. So I, I had a moment where I saw a beautiful sunset. And occasionally in New Jersey, you know, we can, we can see a beautiful sunset because, you know, New, Jer uh, New York sends a smog over to block us from seeing the sun. And then eventually the wind comes from the ocean and pushes it to Pennsylvania where it belongs. So. Um, I had someone from Pennsylvania at the last mass <laughs> upset about it. I said, it's a joke. It's a joke. Relax. So anyway, I saw this sunset and these beautiful colors and the rays of light. It, it was just amazing. So I said to myself, there's no way that's an accident. God has to be real. And once I made that decision that God had to be real, I began my quest, I said, well, if he's really there, then I need to get close to him. I need to know who he is. And my dad gave me a Bible for Christmas, and I started to pray, but then I stopped. And the reason I mentioned this is because it was when I prayed the rosary that it made a difference, because Mary was praying for me and with me. So then in the summer, my dad gave me a miraculous medal, which I had hoped to give to you today, but again, you're people from the previous masses wiped me. I brought 500, but they're all gone. So maybe you can get one on your own. But the miraculous medal, Mary promises great graces to those who wear it. I had the medal around my neck, and um, I, I said a little prayer. I said, God, show me how to get close to you. And then I believe that prayer was answered by another prayer, which was the rosary. I saw the rosary of my mother's dresser, and I borrowed it, and I started to pray it every day for a week. And I thought, wow, this is hard. I was 14 years old, you know. It's a lot of Hail Mary. Whew, it's brutal. So I said, enough of that. I was done after about a week. But then the thing that happened is because when you pray the rosary, you do not pray alone. The highest saint in heaven is praying for you and with you to help you. And that's the beauty of the rosary. So, I believe the Blessed Mother was praying for me to get an insight, which I got, to help me get back to the rosary. So I had this thought the following week. I thought, you know, wait a minute, last week I felt better. I was more at peace. I was happy. What, what was I doing last week? And I thought, and I thought, I was praying the rosary. Oh, maybe that was it. 
I'm going to give it another shot. So I went back and prayed the rosary some more, and I began to ask for things, and they started to happen. Things that couldn't be explained away with coincidence. Ah, that's just it's a coincidence. God didn't answer that. Oh, no. No, too many factors were involved to be explained away by coincidence. So there I was, 14 years old with this rosary. I said, wow, this is working. This is the way to get close to God. So the rosary led me to the Bible, to understanding it, to studying proper books on the, uh, the scriptures, to understand the Catholic faith, apologetics, led me to the Eucharist, to believe in the living bread come down from heaven, truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, changed my life. So I have spent, uh, I'm almost 30 years ordained, next year be 30, I've spent my priesthood going around wherever I could go, uh, where I could get a pastor let me come to his church to preach on the rosary and give my personal witness for what Mary has done for me. So my challenge for you is to pray one decade of the rosary, just 10 Hail Marys of glory be in our Father, because the rosary is made up of decades. So rather than starting out with the whole big thing and people be, oh, I try, oh, it's too much, Father. You don't really have an excuse to not pray one decade. Really, 10 Hail Marys of glory be in our Father. You know, God keeps you going every day. Your next heartbeat brought to you by the love of God. Would it hurt you to express some gratitude in that attitude by praying a decade of the rosary every day? So try it for one month and ask for something. Ask for something maybe you, you know, have been hoping God would help you with. I, had, I got a letter from one lady who said, Father, I did the decade a day for 30 days. On the 30th day, God granted a prayer request that I had been asking for for years. So many people sending me witness to telling me how they're, they're so much more at peace, they feel closer to Jesus, their faith is growing, and it has changed their lives. So I'm hoping that you will recognize the value of those words that God sent his mother to planet Earth, not once, but several times. Pray the rosary every day. And I have a little saying, a decade a day keeps the devil away.